Cell phones. Even those of us old enough to remember life before them can hardly imagine life without them now. But as with all new technologies, drugs and products, what do we really know about how they affect our health, especially long term? No one can say for sure in the beginning, and as with most big industries, by the time scientific studies are performed, there is enough money at stake that negative findings are suppressed. Well, when it comes to the latest in mobile networks, wireless technology and smart devices, make no mistake, there is an attack being perpetuated on your health and well-being. The cell tower going up in your neighborhood? If it's not now, it may soon. They say it would allow phone companies to put up new antennas in your neighborhood, whether you like it or not. But to pave the way for that game change, telecom companies need to put up between 30,000 and 50,000 of these small cell antennas. Local neighborhoods would be seeing something the size of a refrigerator showing up on a street pole, and they could say nothing to stop it. They have no place in front of homes in residential neighborhoods. Now, what about you, the ones that are already up? The ones that are Excuse me. Of all It's because you're getting beamed with all these invisible signals, but the high-powered signals that are directionally aimed at the devices that are using them. The, the manufacturers actually tell people in the instruction manual, which I've never read, to put not to put the cell phone against your ear. It's time to tell the American public the truth. Wireless electronic computer. Right now it's solving mathematical problems for the U.S. Army, but who knows, someday a machine like this may check up on your income tax. Any technology that pollutes the air by sending signals wirelessly can contribute to electropollution. Today, that means more than cell phones, laptops, and tablets. It means all of your smart devices from TVs to toasters, smart meters to baby monitors, and refrigerators to speakers. Even fitness trackers have recently shown to negatively impact wearers with the Wi-Fi radiation they give off, causing a variety of reactions, ranging from skin rash to insomnia. All of these devices all emit electromagnetic radiation, often abbreviated as EMR or EMF for electromagnetic frequency. This kind of radiation is non-ionizing radiation. The risks from ionizing radiation, such as that from X-rays and nuclear power, are not as contested. Because it is non-ionizing, the industry would have you believe it is risk-free. But studies show this kind of radiation does impact human health, especially over an extended period of time. As these bands become cluttered with more and more devices, the networks slow down unable to meet demand. This is supposedly why engineers created 5G, a place in the spectrum that still has wide bandwidth available, in the millimeter range. Millimeter wave technology will supposedly offer us the ability to transfer and download vast amounts of data and videos, with speeds up to 100 times faster. Downsides admitted to include massive use of battery life and the need for more cell towers, a lot more. Millimeter waves are short waves, therefore obstructed easily by buildings and other physical or geographical objects which translate to a need for many, many more towers. In fact, experts estimate that we will need one tower for every 12 homes. This would make it virtually impossible to avoid the radiation from these towers. People are getting neurological effects, people are getting cancer from wireless radiation, people are getting immune system problems, mm -hmm. and fertility is affected, basically affecting all systems of the body. Proponents point out that this move will drive the economy with jobs, such as for installing new towers. But what about the health concerns associated with the technology? Is it our economic duty to suffer the risks to our health? Cell phones first appeared in consumer markets in the 1980s without any government safety testing. Less than a decade later, users were already being diagnosed with lethal brain tumors, with lawsuits and fake research to prove safety following soon thereafter. As early as the 1990s, when fewer than 10 out of every 100 American adults had a cell phone, scientists proved that radiation from cell phones and towers damages DNA. Quickly thereafter, the science began piling up. Multiple studies show a link to brain cancer and brain tumors, up to three times increased risk, 
with even higher risk for those who use cell phones before age 20. Studies show radiation from cell phones cause tumors around the heart. On the second floor where I took my lessons, there are seven wireless routers on the ceiling and many people using wireless laptops. It was there that I felt like a volcano was erupting in my heart. Scientists repeatedly find that cell phone radiation impacts fertility and causes low sperm counts and increases risk of miscarriage by as much as 50%. Studies link EMF radiation to autoimmune diseases and mental health problems, from anxiety to dementia. EMFs have been found to change the behavior of tissues and cells, harming blood, DNA, and bone marrow, as well as compromising whole systems, such as the reproductive system, endocrine system, and cardiovascular system. So what is prolonged exposure then? Well, the industry would have you believe, and have the industry-funded studies that show, cell phones are safe unless you are a heavy user. The problem is that what was heavy use 10 years ago, approximately nine hours of exposure per day, is light use today. If anything, the risk is even greater than these findings may imply. When independent scientists performed a detailed biological assessment of how cell phone radiation affects tissue, they found a direct link between exposure and an increase in tumors in the heart and brain. According to the researchers, just 20 minutes of cell phone use every day can triple your risk of developing a brain tumor. Combine that with the fact that 9 out of 10 cell phones exceed regulatory limits for radiation, according to the latest data, with most emitting three times the radiation as manufacturers claim, and you can begin to see the concern. And 5G makes it all worse. Cell towers, mobile phones, smart meters, and other smart devices emit electromagnetic radiation. These frequencies are how the new technology will enable downloading more data at higher speeds. Additionally, 5G networks will employ MIMO technology, an acronym for multiple input, multiple output. This type of technology uses a lot more transmitters per cell tower to send and receive information. This increase in transmissions and therefore EMF exposure is expected to correlate to an increase in health trauma. Trials of the new technology have not gone well. After 5G was installed around firehouses in San Francisco, firefighters started reporting unusual health problems, ranging from confusion to memory problems. Symptoms disappeared when they relocated to different fire stations. And last time I checked, firefighters weighing in, who dorm and live, we are not transient employees, at the fire stations, when did we stop mattering as far as input goes from people and as stakeholders for, for what the impact is going to be these towers? A scientist from Gateshead, England, is speaking out about the health problems 5G has created in his community. After 5G was installed in their street lamps in 2016, residents started experiencing a variety of side effects, ranging from insomnia to nosebleeds and even miscarriages, birth defects, and stillbirths. Scientists believe the EMF radiation disrupts gene expression and the body's ability to keep cells healthy. Millimeter wave radiation has been shown to be more easily absorbed by human skin, leading Israeli experts to warn of increased risk of skin cancer and skin diseases for those exposed to this type of radiation. In 2002, a Russian study confirmed that millimeter wave technology compromises the immune system. Separate Polish and Japanese studies found that the technology damages eye tissue. Other research linked exposure to disruptions in heartbeats and rhythms and linked it to heart disease, sleep disorders, and infertility. We are already being bombarded with electromagnetic pollution from our smartphones, Wi-Fi, smart meters, new vehicles, and all the other automated devices on the market. Recently, it was proven that smart meters interfere with normal heart function. They emit a constant bombardment of microwave radiation that can be very damaging to the heart, which most people don't realize. As our society moves towards smart homes and smart cities, driverless cars, and autonomous augmented realities, we will all become even more saturated in electropollution. It's not just children and pregnant women that are in danger. Peer-reviewed studies have consistently shown that EMF radiation impacts nature and wildlife too. And meanwhile, before 5G is rolled out in mass, 
Lawmakers are busy passing new laws that will make it difficult for communities to opt out of using the technology. All in the name of progress. Why? Cell phones constantly talk to cell towers using microwave energy, continuously exposing us to the microwave radiation. Research by the U.S. Navy found that this radiation breaks down cell membranes and the blood-brain barrier that keeps toxins out of the blood. As far back as 2011, the World Health Organization's International Agency for Research on Cancer warned that radiation from cell phones was possibly carcinogenic to humans. In 2014, the California Department of Public Health refused to release the documents detailing the risks of exposure to cell phone radiation and the correlation between long-term use and increased risk of cancer. They claimed it was suppressed because it would lead to chaos and confusion among the public. However, they also argued that to release the documents would negatively impact the telecommunications industry. In 2017, a Superior Court judge ordered them to release the documents in the interest of public health. The U.S. National Toxicology Program confirmed that EMF radiation from cell phones causes cancer in 2016. The $25 million decade-long study found the same unusual cancers around the heart, schwannoma, and malignant brain, glial tumors, that previous studies have found. Scientists were so concerned that they called on the World Health Organization to re-evaluate the carcinogenity of cell phone radiation. In response to these studies, the FDA released a statement that said in part, we have not found sufficient evidence that there are adverse health effects in humans caused by exposure at or under the current radio frequency energy exposure limits. It's worth noting that those exposure limits were set by the FCC 20 years ago, when the average call was just six minutes long. The industry has been funding their own research outcomes since the 1990s. Their official stance on EMF radiation is that there is no definitive link between wireless devices and cancer or other illnesses. As with most other big industries, the government is clearly doing PR and pushing science propaganda, which legitimizes the discrediting of dissident voices. But even the industry-funded Wireless Technology Research Project from the 1990s, which conducted more than 50 original studies, advised industry leaders that the results of those studies raised serious questions about the safety of using cell phones. The research confirmed that cell phone use doubled the incidence of brain tumors, most often on the right side of the head where most phones are used. Industry frontman Tom Wheeler dismissed the research by casting doubt on its validity because it had not yet been published, though it was peer-reviewed and was later published. Wheeler would go on to become chairman of the FCC under the Obama administration, and once there, he was instrumental in paving the way for 5G. The United States will be the first country in the world to open up high band spectrum for 5G networks and applications. And that's damn important. And now lawmakers are going out of their way to not only get 5G installed throughout the nation and the world, they are doing it very quietly. Most communities receiving the technology don't even know about it. Multiple efforts to pass legislation allowing transmitter installation on existing towers, as well as public right-of-ways, conservation areas, greenways, and even neighborhoods are being pushed through without input from those communities. Further, many of those bills take the additional step of banning local governments from being able to pass their own laws limiting or preventing said installation. In North Carolina, for example, Local government representatives worked with industry stakeholders in secret to draft a bill with no input from the public. The bill's sponsor, Representative Jason Sane, is on record as receiving large campaign contributions from the industry. Not all lawmakers are on board, though. A former aerospace engineer, Senator Patrick Kolbeck, addressed the long list of health concerns known to be causes by EMF and cell phone radiation and urged his fellow lawmakers not to rush 5G. These adverse health impacts are the youngest among us because their blood-brain barrier has not been fully developed. That's why people are concerned about that. I know there's a convenience issue. I'm addicted to this stuff myself, right? This is an issue where I love the convenience of having wireless access. But I also know that in Article 4, Section 51 of our Michigan Constitution, our primary concern is supposed to be the health of our citizens. That is supposed to be the primary concern. 
It is also worth noting that several countries have more stringent rules on cell phone radiation than the U.S., including China, Russia, Italy, France, and India. More than 190 experts have expressed concern about the health risks of 5G wireless networks and urged the industry to delay implementing the technology until it can be evaluated by independent researchers. But those pleas have fallen on deaf ears. Nowadays, 95 out of 100 Americans and 3 out of 4 adults worldwide have cell phone access. That's more than 5 billion people. The wireless industry is one of the fastest growing industries on the planet, with sales increasing every year. Like big tobacco and big oil, the industry manipulates the science to make it appear as though scientists don't agree, and the research is inconclusive. It is a highly orchestrated disinformation campaign designed to protect the profits of a multi-billion dollar industry. So with solid evidence of real health dangers, why is none of this ever on the news? Obviously, there's a lot of money at stake, but that doesn't explain the sneaky, underhanded tactics the government and lawmakers have gone to to push through the new 5G technology before people even know it's being installed in their neighborhoods. Previously filed under conspiracy theory, the body of evidence proving the dangers EMF radiation and the risks of using cell phones and smart devices is becoming too big to ignore any longer. And still, the corporate-owned media keeps silent. Will independent journalists, so often accused of spreading fake news when they stray from the accepted narrative, be receiving any kudos or acknowledgement of the service they have provided? Most likely not. Mike Adams, publisher of Science.News and Health.News, has been warning about the dangers for over a decade. He says that for years, the mainstream media insisted there was no link between cell tower radiation and brain tumors, effectively putting billions of people at risk and costing an unknown number of innocent lives. So why the media blackout? What's the real reason behind the push for this untested technology? We know it's all about the money. But we're not just talking about the infrastructure and new phones. It turns out that 5G, with its MIMO technology and lightning-fast speeds, will allow devices to communicate with each other better, seamlessly, and effortlessly. Which means you won't even realize that your devices are sharing information with each other, as well as other people. Namely, corporations that want your data for marketing and surveillance. They are setting up to collect massive amounts of your private data. This is the technology that will allow automatic, real-time, online surveillance of everything and everyone. That's where the money and the motivation to spread this technology is coming from. But at what cost? In all the research on EMF radiation, it has also been discovered that children's brains absorb twice the EMF radiation that adult brains do. And by today's norms for cell phone usage, it's fair to say that most youth over the age of 10 or 12 would qualify as heavy users. Studies have linked behavioral problems as well as mental health problems in children to EMF radiation. Furthermore, cell phone use is hindering the development of social skills. Experts warn parents that heavy smartphone use is actually linked to increased social isolation, as well as depression and suicide. This is due in large part to a smartphone-derived phenomenon, cyberbullying. Statistics from the CDC show that suicide and depression rates have soared over the last decade, in sync with the increase in smartphone use. And as we grow ever more dependent on these devices, we give up our autonomy as well as our ability to think. If you're concerned that millennials are too easily led and self-centric, wait until the next generation enters the workforce. Their entire identities are online, and they are being manipulated from a very early age into thinking and acting a certain way, like members of a hive, capable of only groupthink as defined by their platforms of choice. These kids won't even know anything else but being controlled, and the social consequences for straying from the hive are great. Big tech is already deciding what is real news and what is fake news, who can have a voice and who cannot. They are already able to track our movements in the real world and online, and market products to us accordingly. With the personal data that 5G will give them, 
they would have the capability to help the socialist left regime realize their ultimate goal of turning the United States into the next communist China. 5G will grant the bandwidth to track all of our activities and behaviors, online and off. Soon, like Chinese citizens, we may find ourselves needing social credit in order to travel or shop or go to school or get a job. And it will be too late then to stop it. To limit exposure, you can develop these habits to limit your exposure to EMF radiation and electropollution. Send text when you can instead of talking on the phone. When you do talk on the phone, use speakerphone or headphones and hold the device away from your body and keep conversations short. Never carry your cell phone against your skin. Do not sleep with it near your bed. Remember that children's brains are still developing and you need to minimize their exposure. To fight 5G being installed in your community, contact your federal, state, and local government representatives to share your concerns and ask for them to slow the process, review the evidence, and think about better protections and more research. Spread the word with neighbors and friends and encourage them to take action as well. Otherwise, with so many pollution crises facing society today, such as the trash in the oceans, the heavy metals in the water, and pesticides in our food, Will electropollution awareness gain the traction it needs to affect change? After all, it is, for the most part, invisible. Which makes it very easy for the telecommunication industry to downplay potential risk by keeping it out of sight, out of mind.